Hello, welcome to my garage. In the previous video you could have seen that I have mounted a leaf motor inside the engine bay of the Volvo. Today I'm going to mount the drive shafts and I'm going to connect all the wiring so it's possible to drive it. So I hope at the end of this video I can drive it on the driveway because it won't be roadworthy uh, for quite a while. If you like this kind of videos don't forget to subscribe. Let's get started! First I have sandblasted the CV joints, inner and outer, and I have painted them with a rattle can, so they're nice and shiny again. First the inner part goes back on the new shaft, locked in place with a clip. Next I fill the tripod with a lot of grease and put it over the sliding elements. Just like the original situation I make some dimples into the metal so the sliding parts can't come out. The boots go back on. The CV joints are painted. They look a lot better now. But uh, this one has been shipped to the company to make the drive shafts. I didn't know you could disassemble them, but I have to reassemble it now. I have New grease. I have my example of how it should turn out. So let's give it a try to get it all back together. I used a lot of grease and then I could tap it all back in uh, place by rotating the inner part. Those were gentle taps so I didn't damage the balls or anything else. And I finish it up with a lot of grease getting back in. Now I put back on the clip that locks in place the CV joint. Probably I should have put on the boot first. And the CV joint slides on and with a, a few gentle taps of the hammer it slots in place. You can hear it when it's all the way in. And the boot goes on the CV joint. That's one dry shaft completed. Now let's finish the other one and then uh, we can put them on the car. To put the CV joint back in I have to get the lower wishbone off. I use a jack to pull it away from the upper side. To get it all the way back in the gearbox I use a hammer to tap it back in. You can hear it when it's seated. Let's check the length of the drive shaft. It's now completely in. I have about 4 centimeters. Now I pull the shaft all the way out. And now I have about 2. So from the 
about four and a half centimeters of play i have upwards still about two centimeters two and a half centimeters so drive shaft length should be good luckily try to phase it up the bolt goes back in on the other side the drive shaft is locked with the locking plate i had csc milled and painted Now it's time to find a place for the zombie verter. I use some rift nuts to get it in place. I have a little bolt through the rift nut. A nut, two washers. Let's see if we can get it. First one is in. Now I can use the zombie verter as a template to drill the second hole. And in goes a rift nut. And now I have a nice place for the zombie verter. Now let's see if we can get some wiring done. The wiring to the connection box uh, can be put in place. That's it. Now I'm making a connector to the wiring loom of the leaf motor. This one needs a power ground and can wires. One of the power wires comes from the zombie verter via a relay. Let's put in a new relay into the fuse box so I can connect the wire from the low side switch for the power to the inverter. Let's see if these connectors I bought will fit. This hole. Connect the fits perfect. I use one of the main fuses on this uh, fuse box to get three permanent powered fuses in. Top one. This one. Yeah, it's in. Then this one goes to a new fuse. The third hole, popping in a seven and a half amp fuse. Thirty is this one. Eighty-five is should be this one. Yeah, this one back. Two 
this one should get power. If this one is pulled to ground. Pin four is this one. Check, check, double check. Goes in like this. The second is inverter through the relay. One down, four to go. Next I put in the permanent power to the zombie inverter. It's going into the fuse box to one of the three places. Uh, 3M fuse to the zombie inverter. This is a ground strap to the motor. It's also connected to the engine mount, uh, to the chassis. So I have a decent ground. The wires to the vacuum sensor. I'm going to put them in some snake skin. No, this wire is nicely wrapped. Connected later when I have the other wires out of the way. I have found a brake pedal wire, so I'm going to connect that up to the zombie. So, brake input is connected. Now I just have to solder a few wires and then I can check it out after soldering I protect the joints with some heat shrink And the connector goes to the leaf stack. It's leaking oil. Looks like it's leaking from the drain plug. Let's see if we can get it loose. No, oh, it's not tight at all. That might be a problem. So I don't think there's oil inside. Uh, very little. That's not the 1.4 liters that should be in it. Now let's put the drain plug in. Come to reuse the old washer. I'll talk with the spec. I found it should be 25 foot pound. It's not much. But it's an aluminium casing. And the filler hole bolt needs to come off. That was quite tight. Use a funnel with some tube to get the oil in. In goes a little over 1.4 liters. And the 
Stock goes back in, of course. Stock to spec. In goes the battery. On the battery charger, I don't have enough power to get the systems running. I have checked it with the battery charger, so I'm sure there's no short circuit that breaks the fuses or anything like that. Vacuum sensor connected now, so the vacuum pump is not running constantly. Now let's see, the, when I go to reverse, reverse goes on, forward works, pot to 30, when I press throttle it goes up. So everything seems to work. The only thing now is missing is the high voltage, but I can connect it. Now it's time to see what happens if we try to drive it. Everything is connected, so it should go. And it's driving. Very careful because I'm not sure what the brakes will do. Brakes work a little. And we're driving. The car is driving for the first time on the leaf motor. That's it for this video. It worked. The car is driving on the driveway. It's going forward, it's going backward. But the power steering is not working and there are a lot of things like the cooling liquids. It all has to be connected. The heater has to be connected. So there are more than enough things to do before I can get it to its inspection. If you want to follow me getting the car on the road again, don't forget to subscribe. Hope to see you on the next one.